Hello, everyone. My guest today is Matt Bonatti. He's the CEO and co-founder of Lead Gnome, the market-leading reply email mining web service that generates account-specific contacts, enhances existing leads, and identifies sales trigger events. Matt believes sales and marketing alignment, transparency, and communication optimize revenue generation, and he champions his philosophy in his teams and writings. Matt, are you ready to take us to the top? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. Tell us more about Lead Gnome. People know email marketing. I think you have a unique twist on it. What are you doing? How do you make money? Yeah, so um, I don't know. A couple companies ago, long time ago now, uh, you know, I I jumped into marketing coming out of product management and product marketing, and of course, lead generation and uh, supporting those sales efforts is what it's all about. And what I recognize is that inside of autoresponders, right out of office, uh, left the company, all those kinds of things that come back at us after we send an email, there's a ton of great information in there. And so I would send my team in after it, but that anybody who's ever done it knows that's a real pain. Um, and, you know, sales and marketing teams uh, know the data's there, but it's really hard to get at. I looked for a solution; there wasn't one, so I built it. And this is specifically, I mean, give, give me, give me, tell me a story right now of a customer. Name the customer that's using you and how they're using you. Yeah. So uh, Steve Richard, most people probably from your. Um, uh, you know, from your show, we'll know the name. He's a inside sales sales guru. He is a co-founder and CRO of Exec Vision. Yep. Um, and uh, their team uses us. And the reason that they're uh, leveraging us is that their sales teams are leveraging the new cadence types tools, right? Um, the yeswares and sales lofts, outreach, those kinds of things. Uh, Aaron Ross made a very uh, impassioned plea for salespeople to not just call, but to leverage other tools of the trade, email specifically, social media. And so these cadence systems allow uh, salespeople to do that. And part of that email, of course, is reply email. And uh, they leverage us to get in deeper and broader within those organizations there's sort of this magic number floating out there of seven to close enterprise deals. So gaining and mapping out those new uh, contacts within organizations is critical. Um, the other thing that Steve talks about uh, a lot, and he's coined this phrase, old client, new company, OCNC. And Lead Gnome plays very well into that. So uh, a pers- uh, Craig Elias and Steve Richard and I have worked on this concept. Craig uses uh, his method of shift selling where he looks for sales trigger events and lead gnome specifically looks for some of these very, very early, much earlier than the sales intelligence databases out there. That but it's straight- all on replies. It's all auto replies. So when you get a left the company, you know, somebody's moved on. You need to reach out to that person immediately Interesting. and start Interesting. to engage them. So I can say something like, uh, when I send out my next email blast to my to my list of some, you know leads, uh, and I always will get you know twenty or thirty that are either an out of office and another you know call it twenty or thirty that are hey I moved on this isn't my email anymore. I can basically right. before I even send that email say if I get an out of office email reply with this kind of thing name tag here right you got blah, it. Blah, blah, blah. got it interesting. Yep. So it's almost yep. like it's almost like reactive based email marketing versus is like the initial outreach. That's right. So, so we, we provide all this intelligence, including things like um, uh, new titles, right? Maybe somebody's moved in a role. One mm-hmm. of our best use cases for post sales, right? The account teams is renewals. So if you know your primary contact um, has changed titles, maybe they were your end user. Now you're, they're your buyer. Mm-hmm. That's maybe interesting. your primary contact left You've got to get that replacement person, which we provide to you, and now you engage with them to make the renewal go smoothly. Yep. Now, Matt, is this a, a pure play SaaS company? Pure play SaaS. Okay. What's a, what's a customer paying on average, would you say? So uh, sales folks will pay on average $10 a month. Okay. Got nine, it. Nine ninety nine. So you're very much in that. You've got to build uh, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, dozens of thousands of customers really to make the revenue scale. Or do you have a few enterprise folks that are in the higher ranges? Yeah, so we started, our primary target were um, marketing ops and uh, demand generation folks. Those companies are five-figure deals for us. Got it. Those organizations. The volume is there, et cetera. Sales, we're just about to launch. We have a lot of salespeople using us, but we're about to launch in Q1, probably in February, a, uh, a sales dedicated solution. 
the onboarding has all been streamlined. Uh, there's some new features in there for salespeople. Uh, so we think it's going to be a big hit. And the price point is killer good at nine ninety nine. Yep. You guys are hearing this likely when it, in July. Uh, so you can actually probably go to the site now and see that new product since obviously you're listening to this now, but we're recording in January. So that's good stuff, Matt. When did you launch the company? Uh, we launched, well, I, I launched it in uh, 2014, but we didn't have the product ready. I went through alpha and beta until uh, late in 2015. Okay. So it's only been a couple of years since we've been selling. And bootstrapped? 100% bootstrapped, still bootstrapped. I love that. I love that. And now I what it, <laughs> yeah, it's good. Now, what have you, and maybe I'll ask more about your history in terms of your past companies and what you learned from those, whether they were funded or not. Uh, but focusing on Lean Gnome still for a second, what are you at now today in terms of team size? So, uh, so dedicated employees, it's still just uh, two of us, my co-founder and myself. Everything else is outsourced to folks that we have used many times over the years. Yep. So I have in total about a dozen folks working for the organization today. But you've, it sounds like the way you articulated that, you have figured out a way to keep them off of your fixed expense kind of line item. You're not worrying about right. healthcare. You're not working about desk space. That's right. We're yeah. all, in fact, we're 100% virtual. Yep. Uh, another great thing, right? My commute to work is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on a day like today when Boston just got eight inches of snow, right? Exactly. Right. I didn't have to go anywhere, right? Yep. All my friends are out there fighting traffic. Uh, it's it's a great way to work, right? Um, with all of the tools, the virtual tools, um, our systems are up in the cloud in AWS, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a much nicer way, especially in a bootstrap model to make the economics work. Now, what are you at today in terms of how many customers you've scaled to? So we have multiple dozens. Okay. And our revenue is in hundreds of thousands uh, ARR. That's great. So if, I mean, if you have multiple, well, okay, so wait, break that down for me. So multiple dozens, I'll say between 12 and 100 customers. Is that fair? It's a big enough yes. range. Okay. Yep. So multiple dozens, but you said you're in the hundreds of ARR. Um, your ARPU that you told me earlier must be too small then, right? Because if I take 10 bucks times 100, that's exactly. only a grand a month. But but our marketing departments, where, which is where we started, are, are five-figure deals each. Got it. But And just to be clear, those five-figure deals, those are not set-up fee professional service. That is a, those are recurring annual yes, they are. things. No, sir, we're not a services company. In fact, one of the ways we gain reach is to um, partner with consultancy organizations, specifically um, platinum and gold HubSpot uh, consultancies and Marketo, Marketo consultancies driven by Marketo champions. Got it. Okay, good. Now you mentioned you're in the hundreds of thousands today. Give me a sense of growth. Where were you at December, 2016, 13 months ago? Yeah, so um, we have, we did a two and a half X year. Oh, great. Um, and and of course the startup year, we did a we did a, a killer year, it was five X, but yeah. you know, that's starting. Small, small numbers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Small yeah. So, but the growth is there. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's good. That's really good growth. Um, so in terms of hundreds of thousands, I mean, we can say somewhere between like 200 and 500. Is that a fair enough range? That is fair. Okay. Yeah. So going back 13 months, you were call it somewhere in the like 80 to 160 K a month. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Got exactly. it. Exactly. We're, we're, we're north of a hundred. That's good. Okay. So call it, call it a hundred back then. And you've two more than two X that. So oh, past the quarter million AR mark. That's right. That's good stuff. What are you going to scale to this year? Uh, so I I would love to, for us to kill it this year, and I think we will because of the new product. Um, and I have a, a an interesting business model behind that. Um, but uh, I think we'll be at three quarters of a mil. Three quarters, interesting. And where is most of that growth going to come from? Expanding what current customers are paying you, or going and finding and and more rapidly onboarding new folks? It's going to be a combination. So the strategy here is to leverage sales folks because you know. A, the way to expand and get awareness, we've done a lot with content. We've done a lot with outreach through uh, partners that I described. Mm -hmm. But salespeople will also drive tremendous awareness. And the support that their marketing teams can provide them if they also take on Lead Gnome is incredible. So one of the classic problems for salespeople is that they've got target accounts, right? We hear about this in ABM. It's one of those big email um, uh, trends uh, last year and this year is all about ABM. How do we account leverage, based marketing? Yeah. Sorry. Account based marketing. How do we leverage that so that we're not just spraying and praying, but we're doing targets, right? We're, we're doing the right things. We're building plays 
email is always part of that play. And, um, and so when you have that alignment and marketing is providing that, if you will, air cover, but focused air cover, the new contacts, the new leads that marketing is able to uh, garner from reply emails are relevant finally to sales. They're in the target accounts. Here they are. Go get them. Hmm. Uh, it's an incredible aspect of what we do. That's awesome. And we talk about them as being sales ready leads because they're not only in the account, they're generally in the uh, opportunity. And obviously churn is critical in a SaaS company. What are you guys at? Our churn is really low. What's low? It's uh, it's clearly less than 5% a year. Okay, got it. In terms of logo or, or revenue? Uh, uh, actually both, both. Okay. Both less than 5%. Okay. That that's actually pretty impressive. Uh, considering, it, yeah. considering your price point. Um, usually so you see churning this have, kind of stuff really high. I, I, absolutely. I have multiple companies. In fact, I was just on, um, they take us with them. Mm-hmm. So what's really interesting about this world is our adoption. While we have across many segments, right? I have oil and gas companies using us. Um, I have healthcare companies using us. Uh, security companies using us, but high tech is is probably the biggest swath, as you might expect. They're early adopters. The, the the attrition, the churn in that field, as we know, is pretty high. But when my customers go, when they leave the company, they take us with them, and they make sure that we're stable in their old company. Sure, that makes sense. You need people to be fired. <laughs> that's your that's your growth that way, but yes that's your growth strategy <laughs> that's my growth strategy all right what do you what are you paying matt to acquire customers what's your cac um that it's really too early to tell we don't spend a lot frankly um, like less than five grand a month oh yeah easy okay. easy yeah. so it's mostly we, just your really, time we're not even doing that right it's just my time yeah interesting so it's too early really for cac it's too early to talk about lifetime value and payback and all that yeah. I mean, I'd love to tell you that when we get it, uh, happy to do that. But yeah. right now it's just too early. No, it's fine. There's the, their cohorts not there to even analyze. I, I totally get That's it. Right. Just too early. Um, interesting. Tell me about your past companies. Uh, what was the like, what, what was your biggest success? Would you say? Oh, um, well, biggest success was probably, um, open market way back in the e-commerce days. But my last organization was logged me in. I headed up marketing, uh, oh, there. Okay, good. Yeah. And what was wonderful about Log Me In was it provided me with high transaction rate, right? We, we, they were one of the pioneers in freemium. So to understand that high transaction rate and the early adoption and bringing people through that. Now, we don't personally do freemium model, um, but we do a free trial of 30 days. And that gives people more than enough time to see the results and get used to it. Yeah. And, and that's been a big, big win for Is us. this your first time going out on your own? It is my first time on my own. I've right. done a couple of startups. I've done three startups before this. Um, the you know the earliest I was in at one of those startups was 19 or something like that. Okay. So but were you on the my, cap table? Did you get did you get some equity? Of course. Yeah. 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 And was that was that company bootstrapped or raised? No raised. Interesting. What did you this learn? Is my first bootstrapped. I was going to say, what did you learn from the, 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 the raising route? And you're going, I'm going to bootstrap this time. Oh, uh, well, you know, I won't say I have trouble with authority, but um, you I have wanted trouble with authority. Chance, <laughs> I wanted a chance to mess it up myself. Right. Yeah. And frankly, uh, given the um, costs associated with building the product and those kinds of things that you can do. And, and I recommend to folks, go build it. Right. Yeah. Go get that started. Do an MVP. Use sort of a lean method. Uh, you can get a real feel for what's happening, whether your customers and the marketplace are truly looking at you uh, for that kind of service or not. And then if you want to accelerate, you have a lot of options. In fact, you have more options at that point than if you went directly to VC, in my humble opinion. If a send bloom or someone else like a Yesware approached, actually, Yesware makes a lot of sense. Bellows is what probably oh, yeah. a few blocks from you, right? Um, right. If, if, if they come and offer you like two or three X ARR, do you sell the company? That's I'm having a blast. I don't know. We'd have to talk. Are you married? I am. Would your wife kill you or your partner kill you if you go home and said, I just turned down a three X deal on ARR? Um, <laughs> uh, I would seriously talk. I mean, I would have the serious conversation. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, but 
honestly, uh, you know, you're running your own thing, right? Yeah. It is so much fun. Yeah. Every day is so much fun. It's funny. I ask that question a lot and, and they'll say, Nathan, listen, I talked to my husband or my wife about this and they're saying, Nathan, if you sell the company, that means you're going to be home bugging me all day. No, yeah, right. don't. I don't care what the multiple is. Keep your damn job so that you're not bugging me all day. Right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> That's funny. All right, Matt, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what is your favorite business book? Uh, getting to yes. That's a good one. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, yeah, I would say David Cancel out of Drift. He's awesome. Yep. Nice guy. And you're using it on your site. It's good stuff. Number two, yeah. uh, number two, is there a CEO? Sorry, is there a, hold on. Did you give me a, that first question? What's your favorite, is there a book, your favorite business book? Was yeah, getting, getting to yes? Yeah, do you know that one yeah. by Fisher? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, David Cancel, you're is who you're following up there. Number three, besides John, what's your favorite online tool? Uh, right now it's Drift. Drift. Okay, good. Number uh, four. It sounds like you're, uh, David, if you're listening, it sounds like a sales pitch to me. I'm just kidding, Matt. <laughs> All right. Number four. How many hours of sleep are you getting? Uh, six or seven. Okay. And what's your situation? Married, single? Do you have kids? I am married with two kids, one in college. Oh, great. Two kids. And how old are you, Matt? I am 49. Last question. Take us back to your 20 year old self. What do you wish he knew? Get out there early. <laughs> Get Start. out. Go ahead. Yeah, start early. I mean, you know, uh, at the time I was risk adverse and the reality is youth is wasted on the young, as they say, you got to get out there. You got to try uh, things and latch on to some good mentors, right? They're always happy to help folks. I mean, I love to do it too. There's a lot of us that want to pay it forward. So reach out to people. Guys, he's doing north of around 250 grand a month, or sorry, a year today. That's up from a run rate 13 months ago of just 100 grand a year. So 2.5x growth, bootstrapped. Again, Matt, founder of Reply Email Mining Company, Lead Gnome. He says, okay, I'm gonna go strike it on my own, launch the company, or make it big on his own, right? Either way, but started his own company back in 2014. Two full-time team members, himself and his founder. He's outsourced the rest of it, which is great. There was obviously uh, really helps with your PL in terms of keeping fixed costs off, uh, off those month after month month. He's less than 5% churn annually. So super healthy over a hundred or around but dozens of customers, but less than a hundred, uh, paying, you know, different amounts per month. Some of them in the five figures, some as little as 10 bucks per month. Matt, thank you for taking us to the top. I had fun. Thanks, Nathan.